This talk will be about boards and startups. Um, okay, yes. And it's part of the Pre-Seed Academy, which I do together with Pre-Seed Ventures. So we have organized this talk over the next uh, 30, 35 minutes as me doing an intro to the topic, and then Mass and Dennis from Pre-Seed Ventures and Forecast basically go into the details within a specific case about how a ball can generate value. So let's just go through it. Um, myself, uh, I mainly see myself as an entrepreneur, but I'm also a board member and investor. So I've basically seen this issue from both sides of the table about should we get a board? You know, really? Sometimes it's the entrepreneur who wants it. Sometimes it's the investor forcing us. Should we do it? I'm also a board member myself and see how, at least in theory, these boards can generate value, but also what goes wrong. So with that being said, um, actually the starting point should be what is a board? Because when we ask 100 different entrepreneurs here, some think of advisory board and thought some think of a board of directors. Advisory board is basically those people you want for advice and you can incentivize them in different ways. What the topic of this talk, talk is, is the board of directors. And that's a very formal thing. So if you formi uh, formalize a limited company, Actually, you as a CEO, you report to the board. And that is the board of directors. It could be yourself, your uncle, and your aunt. It can also be a professional board. What we're talking about here today is how can a professional board add value to your company? So what is the potential value of it? Why should we do it? Um, very simplified, I'll say um, building a company is really, really hard. Most of us only do it a few times. So assume that one of you are in the process of building a company, that could be a biotech company, IT company, whatever company, and you've never done it before. Maybe it's good to ask for advice from people that have actually done it. I often use the analogy of building a house. You wouldn't have me to build or lay the bricks for a house. Why? Because I haven't done it. If I should do this stupid thing of actually want to build my own house, actually I want advice from people. That's the same which you can do in a startup is that you can ask for advice from people that have done it before. Most of these people are most likely not interested in being a member or an employee, but maybe they want to be a member of the board and help you that way. So remember, point number one is, well, you can actually ask for advice. I think another thing that we entrepreneurs learn is that it's all about the network. If you compare work in a small company versus a big company, if anyone you have worked in a big company like Maersk or Novo or whatever it is in Denmark, most of your resources are internally. So if you need funding, if you need PR, if you need whatever, they're actually internal resources. If you work in a startup, the resources internally is basically myself and a few people. And all these are external. That can be you want funding, you want someone else to help you, they want a technology partner, whatever. And if you're a first-time entrepreneur, actually a board can help. So um, I just signed a board member in, in, in one of my companies and we have just signed him and already now he made an introduction to a very potential or very important potential uh, fund that could invest in the company. I didn't know about that, uh, th uh, that fund. So having the right board members can actually also add value by helping you uh, increase your network. Um, the third and last is the brand. So when you are out doing a startup, it's a, a lot about trust because you want people to trust you to basically be your first customers, be your employees or whatever, and can be really, really hard. Imagine oh, I want to hire some software engineers. These software engineers I want to hire, they have 10 other jobs opportunities. Why should they work for my early stage startup which no one has heard about? If I had a famous person, doesn't have to be one of those, to say, oh my God, this is the next big thing, that could help. Another example, assume that you want to build a consumer something in Denmark. You know, what is the easiest way to get PR? That is to have a famous business angel that are actually are in this area, that could be the Morten Stronger or Jesper Buch or whatever, to invest in your consumer thing. That will, by itself, bring you on the front page. So, to sum up, in short, a board of directors can help you with skills, it can help you with the brand, and it can help you with the network. And that sounds so fantastic. I'll just have to say that most boards are not really working. 
And you can ask any serial entrepreneur, if there's anyone in this room, and ask in privately, so is your board really adding value to you? Many of them will say no. I try to sum, sum up what I think are the ones that often go wrong. Um, the first one is really that you can easily have board members. I'm 100% sure if I stood up here and said, anyone want to be a board member in my company? Of course, you know, why not? Yeah, I'm part of the decision-making process in a cool company, so it's easy. But having the right people in. So it, coming back to the other examples where you want to build a consumer business in Denmark and you want to have one of those well-known persons in the room because they've done it before. Because Jesper Book was involved in Just Eat, because Martin Strong have done several ones. How many requests do you think they get? They get a lot. So finding the right persons is actually a very important selling process for you. And I see so many boards not being optimal simply because you're having people in there that honestly shouldn't be there because, yes, they sit on the board, but maybe they don't really have the experience to justify it. So how do you incentivize that? So assume one cool person that can bring the skills, the network, the brand, whatever, is, is, um, one is interesting. How should you incentivize that person? You can say if you sit on a board on a big company, like one of those uh, I mentioned before, that could be the Carlsberg, whatever, honestly, they pay a lot of money. So if you are a board member in a big company in Denmark, they pay you several hundred thousand kroner uh, a year to participate in these six board members. Most startups like ours, we don't have the money to pay these people. But guess what? We don't want to. So we often try to avoid paying them money, and instead we want to pay them in shares. Why? Because then they are incentivized the same way as we are. Because doing a startup is not a two-year journey, it's a five- or seven-year journey. So you want to have them on the same page like you. And that also means that you, you avoid getting the wrong um, board members that are just looking for money. You want them that are actually thinking like entrepreneurs by thinking long term. And then you need to have a contract with them. Because m being a board member, of course, you can say, I can help with X, Y, Z. And you should try building a contract where you actually are incentivizing them to do it. And that will mean vesting this year so over time. That could be two, three, four years, whatever, where you say, hey, as long as you're a board member and help us, you actually are getting these shares. If we, for some reason, decided not to have you as board member, well, guess what? Th 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 this is the end of the shares issue to you. So remember, have that vesting schedule of shares. And my final point with this is actually, I think, very important. That is, to have a board means that you have to give up control. So unlike when you have a board consisting of your aunt and your mom, now you actually have a board of professional people. These people are actually taking some risk. In the good old days, there was no risk being on a board member. But if you have been a board member, I'm not saying that's a startup, but if you have been a board member of Roskilde Bank, you actually been sued for millions of kroner. I know a Danish startup where the board member, who's also owner, he was sued for 100 million kroner because they say, you as board member should have known this was taking place. So now board members are saying, if we should be a member of your board, we actually have a personal liability. We only want to do that if we're involved in the business. So you as a CEO, despite that you might own 80% of the business, you actually report to a chairman that could in theory fire you, well, you will not because then you find a new one, but again, you're giving up control. So remember, this is very briefly, a board of directors can add a lot of value in terms of your skills, so there's a higher chance that you actually do this, in terms of at, um, getting you to the right people with the network or the branding effect. What often goes wrong is that you take board members that are not optimal because that's the only one you can get. You are not incentivizing in the right way and you're not building the contract with the vesting of these years. So this five, seven minutes we just had was an introduction to the topic about how to do. So how to be a little bit more specific, I actually asked Mass and Dennis to come, and I think they will introduce <coughs> themselves, but what we try to do is to take a specific case with Mass from pre Ventures and Dennis from Forecast about how they try to build value in the board they're creating. So welcome, Mass and Dennis. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you very much, and just to be clear, thank you, Nikolai, for that very 
nice introduction, always 360. We are talking about boards here, not advisory boards, and there's a specific reason for that. We advise someone to go on the board and help the company to put their hands on the plate. We love advisors, but we shouldn't have too many cooks around the pot. So that's what we're working with here, just so you're clear. Uh, very brief, this is me, director of talent. I do boards, I do you know, strategic sparring with uh, Dennis, for example, about teams and organizations, so on, that's not important. Um, I think the journey, all right. So just give a brief introduction to, to what it is we do, and I apologize for this slide because it's really, really big. <clears throat> we do this a lot, uh, you know, over the past many years, we have done close to 350 journeys from the bottom to the start. I don't know if you can see that it starts down here and then it moves up through the different gates and stages and funding rounds and so on. So we have pretty much experience doing this. One of the things that we found so far is one of the biggest value kickers is really to get a board on board. Uh, being a very early stage investor, we found out that uh, just handing out money is not enough. So we have a, a big thank you. It's fine. So we have, a, we have a big sort of setup around the whole operations part, value lift, value add, known in different names. Basically what we do is that we invest some money and then we go to work with the founders and with the company. Uh, we found that to be, uh, to be the way to grow them up, uh, the companies like Dennis, for example, to support them in the best way is a bit faster than just giving them the money. So we, you know, we, we try to hack the journey a bit. We've seen... Uh, a thousand different things that could go wrong. We boil it down to a hundred and then we came up with what we call 10 pitfalls, 10 remedies in reality. Just to place this in the right order, we actually believe, whoops, and you can't see this, but number two in that segment is setting a board. That is actually something that we do right after the investment is made, whoop, right here, we do the gap, we start putting out the board and then we grow it from there. So. And instead of talking about slides, I want to bring Dennis on stage. <laughs> Dennis is the CEO of Forecast. Um, this is actually could have been something Dennis and I did in 2000 and, and what, Dennis? 16. 16, when we first met. This is a, sort of a tool we use for gapping, finding out, you know, how is this done? What kind of competencies do you need in order to set the right board? We did that a couple of times during the, uh, during the past couple of years. Yep. So if you can just, uh, Dennis, uh, a brief description of you and, and your company. Sure. So my name is uh, Dennis. Uh, I run a company called uh, Forecast. Uh, we are on uh, year three and three days, I think, right now. Um, uh, so basically, at the scaling stage, uh, have raised uh, quite a bit of money and uh, around 40 people uh, sitting here in the, in Copenhagen, uh, with 16 nationalities, I think now, uh, actually. So so pretty diverse team. Um, basically, what we do is we build a project and resource management system that is driven by AI, so that. Sounds very fluffy, right? But what we do is we actually try to automate a lot of uh, manual processes around knowledge work and capacity planning uh, for companies that uh, either deliver some sort of digital product, so that could be websites or software, uh, or you know marketing campaigns and stuff like that. So anything digital, project-based, that's basically where we are at. Uh, we have customers in 41 countries um, with, with the large majority of our customers coming from, from the United States. Um, and yeah. Yeah, Been and you have an mess. amazing board. I have a great board. So yeah. I think, you know, when I, when I started the, the company, the, the whole idea I had was to scale it as fast as possible, right? So how do we get to, to an IPO, right? so basically from when we start and, and what's the plan to get to an IPO and then work back for, uh, from there, right? And, and, and one thing that, that was very clear is that we need to build, build a good board from the, from the beginning, right? Mm. So, so that's, uh, that's what I did. So from day one, uh, you know, I don't th think you even had to say it. I think I actually <laughs> brought it to you and said we yeah. need to build a board and then yeah. we need to find some good people that can augment the, the skills we have as a team. So the team is obviously very small when you start out, right? And then it scales and then you need different competencies along the way, right? I think so. So, so maybe a few words on, you know, setting the first couple of board members. What, what went through your head and, and how did yeah. we actually go about that? So I think uh, the way I see a, a, a board working is basically like any, any type of employer or em employment, right? So, so it's basically, you know, are you hiring people that are under you or are you hiring people that are above you, right? Um, and, and whenever I hire a board member, I, I basically do like a job interview process, right? So we go through a bunch of candidates, we talk to the candidates, we figure out what do they want, what are their kind of desires, and, and, and what can they bring to the table, right? Do they, I mean, do they qualify to be? That sounds a little bit pompous, right? But it's actually quite important that you figure out what, 
what can they bring to you, right? Because if you're giving them equity in something that you're working on scaling, right, and scaling that fast, right, then that can become quite a, a lucrative business for them as well, mm -hmm. right? So I think it's important that, that they really bring value, right? Because obviously, and as Nikolai said, right, mm -hmm. these guys are typically not cheap to, to get on, right? But I think it's, it's key to making it work. Exactly, and, and just to sort of emphasize that a bit, so, so we take this stuff very seriously. I think uh, across the team we meet with uh, close to 500 candidates a year, actually, that we map into a, a portfolio, and we try to distribute these um, individuals, these candidates across a portfolio, but it's always up to the CEO to find, you know, Dennis asks for a guy who is a CEO, B2B enterprise, uh, large stuff. We find a guy like that, or a girl. Actually, we need more girls, just a note. Uh, <laughs> Then he's go to interviews and he picks the best one. He picks the best one on, on, on competencies and chemistry. And that's really how we get it going. So we have a, a ready and, and, and actable, able uh, portfolio of candidates that we can distribute right away. Okay. Yeah, so I think like my, my first, so my first board when I set that up, I think, and I was looking for my, my first chairman, right? Um, I think I had like 10 or 15 interviews with, with candidates, right? Some of them came from pre-seed. So you provided some. I found some through my network, right? And tried to kind of look at people that could provide, provide value, right? And I think, you know, coming to this kind of incentivizing thing, you know, instant disqualifier is if they ask for money, right? Yeah. If they want cash, then it's not the right guy. I mean, then just don't do it, right? Because then they are consultants selling you hours, right? That doesn't work at all, right? So yeah. don't, don't ever, you know, if a guy asks you for cash, just do it. Yeah. Don't do it. True. Um, True. So, so you need to kind of sell them on the vision and the idea that you can build something that's meaningful, right? Mm. Uh, because that's also where they want to provide their value, right? And if these guys are any good, they will get asked a lot, right? Um, and, and you need to, I mean, the job as a CEO is then to convince them that, that you're the right case for them, right? Mm. And they might be on a few boards, right? But I mean, obviously, they're, they're not going to be on 20, right? They might be on two or three or five, right? Um, so it's really important that you can kind of sell the idea of, of, of this becoming something that they want to be a part of, right? And also put their name on, right? Because sure. if you just go and embarrass them, obviously, that's, that's not cool for them either, right? So, so I think that's, that's quite important. True. So, so looking back, oh, do we take questions? Do we? I don't think we have time for that now, but we have a small Q&A, otherwise we'll be, be around. And that's an amazingly big question, so we have to wait <laughs> okay. on that. But I think you're right. It is very, very relevant. Yeah. So, Dennis, uh, back to you. Uh, I can answer you, that, but yeah. Do you have any learnings on, uh, you know, setting this body you'd like to share or anything uh, about that process? In, in yeah, general? so I think, you know, it, as, as with, with, uh, with, with anybody in, in, in around your company, right, it's, it's a matter of kind of having the right competencies at the right time, right? So you should also not be afraid of, of firing your board members if that's necessary, right? So you will have, like, as the company grows and, 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 you know, you need different skill sets because you augment the team, right? So, so the idea with the board initially is that you have a lack of competencies in the team itself, right? which you try to augment with people that have done this before, right? So you can do it faster. And then once the team grows, you get some of those competencies in the team, right? And then you need to find other board members that can do other stuff, right? Mm. And then it becomes actually the board work goes from very operational to becoming more and more kind of strategic. Um, so I think that's important that you don't have people sitting around getting warrants for actually not providing, uh, you know, a, a lot of value. True. And I think, you know, from, you know, when I picked my first chairman, he was really good uh, for the first eight months or so, like something yeah. like that, right? And then, then at that point in time, we're like, okay, we need to swap the guy, right? We need to find a new one that has a little bit more uh, oomph uh, at that pace, right? Oops. And then, you know, we did that. And, you know, I think, you know, it's like when you're, uh, when, you're, when you're doing changes on your team, it's also something that you just need to, when you have that in your head, like, okay, we need to kind of do something, you just need to do it fast, right? I mean, fire fast right that's you know everyone will say this it's like you can never fire too slow right? i think so that's that's a key that's true key thing no matter whether it's up or down right <laughs> 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 but this also back to and this uh, about changing profiles it's also getting the right profiles the right competencies yes. you know towards Very the maturity much. of the journey so maybe you could speak a little about how do you actually use the board how do you utilize it yeah what do they do you know examples of um, so I think it very varies, you know, from 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 company to company uh, that that I see at least, right? But I think for from for my sake, I I didn't want just you know f four or six people sitting every quarter, you know, his, that's the only time you talk to them, right? I didn't want to do that, right? So I actually wanted to get people that I could call at any any given time, right? So I think, and especially with your chairman, right? That that if you if you make that work and and you can make a really good bond with your chairman, then you know you should not be afraid of calling your chairman at 12 o'clock on Friday night. <coughs> When things are just fucked up, right? You, and you, you need to be able to do that. If you can't do that, then you have the wrong chairman, I think, right? I agree. Um, so I think, you know, my chairman, for instance, the one I have now, I talk to him 
if not every day, like every other day, more or less, right? Ask him for advice on, on different things, right? Because you have so many things moving at you, so you need to kind of mm. be able to, to tackle that, right? And, and it's just good to, even though the person doesn't necessarily give you the right answer, they, it's just to bounce it off of someone, right? Mm. Uh, that can like be, be an immense help, I think, right? I think that's a great example. I think we also, uh, so we have developed uh, quite a bit since we've made the first board together as well. But so what we figured out is really that we also have an opportunity to set the right chairperson right away. So the chairman of the board is, if the relationship is good and the, the chemistry with the founders and so on is working, it's actually someone that you can keep along the funding journey. Otherwise, everyone else in the board is going to be instrumentalized. They're going to be changed out with uh, you know new investors and so on. So you end up with only having you know one card at the board, but then you know someone who knows your strategy, the way to work. So finding the right chairperson in the beginning is really a good idea. Yeah, and I think also it's like you know when you first start, it's like you will probably have you know if you if you take an investor on right, you will have they will have one board seat right, and you do the rest, right? And then as you get more <laughs> investors on, you lose seats right. Mm. So it's also kind of you know at some point you you. The, the investors kind of take control of, of what you're doing, right? So it's also quite important that, that you have built that correctly from the start, I think, right? Because that's also why you see a lot of very big startups actually where they actually have lost control completely, right? And and they actually don't control the company, right? It's actually the investors that are controlling the company, right? Sure. So I think that's that's also very important, right? That, yeah. that you need to keep in control even though they have more saying power to, yeah. to some degree, right? You, n you need some voting power on the board. Yeah, you board. need some voting power, yeah. right? That's important. True that. Okay. Even though I've actually, in, my b in, in the three years we've lived, I've, we've never voted once. Okay. So, we have, I didn't we have agreed I didn't at all that. times, right? And <laughs> if they didn't agree, I, I fired them. Oh, that's how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, so that's I was about to true. ask you what your best experience is, <laughs> but I guess it's firing because you say I it's love three it, yeah, times. I love so it, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, what is your best experience with the board so far? Uh, with the board? Uh, best experience, I think it's... It's when 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 you're trying to do this on a daily basis, right? You're very much in the in the trenches, right? And I think it's talking to 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 some of them and understanding the more strategic perspectives, right? So it's like what not what are we doing now and in two months, right? What are we doing in three years, right? What's going to happen in three years? And bounce it off so you make the right decisions at that point, right? Because you you know decisions are easy in in the rearview mirror, right? But but difficult mm -hmm. when you kind of are facing it and you have to to make a, a long term decision, right? All right. So to that coin, you know, the other side, what's the worst experience you had so far? Just to bring that up as well. Worst experience. Uh, so I think there are two things probably, I think. So, so a good board will push you quite a lot, right? It can be quite uncomfortable. <laughs> so you actually, you know, this sounds a little sadomasochistic, right? That you actually put yourself in a spot where you actually, you know, are, are pushed quite a lot. Uh, so that, that can be uh, not very nice at times, right? Uh, and then obviously, you know, I think you know a good example with with one of my board members is wh when when we decided to to switch that person, got really really mad, right, and sold all his shares immediately, right, and just got really pissed, right, and I just didn't expect that that would happen, right, nope. because I mean it's like a grown up guy, you know, yeah. thirty years of experience in the business, and they just get pissed, right, yeah. So that's you know a little still weird. Still people though. Yeah, yeah, still that's people, right? and that's important, right, on, on all on all fronts, I think. All right. So far, so good. Um, we talked a little bit about the journey. I, I think I showed it before with the maturity. Mm -hmm. We touched it uh, on the, you know every investor is going in, but but maybe just for for the beginning. I know with you we s we actually we put on a commercial guy, we had a chairperson, and then we had the one who's your chairman before. Can you can you maybe describe you know how the journey should reflect the the changes and the development in mm -hmm. the board just briefly? Yeah, so I think it's important that you that you try to as I said before like augment the team, right? So it's you know. I'm a computer scientist, right? So, you know, obviously my commercial skills were not that great, right? And then I figured, okay, we need to find like a strong commercial guy, right? So we find a strong commercial guy to be on the board to help out with, with those decisions, right? That I did not necessarily know a lot about. Uh, and, and at the same time, try to kind of find, as, as Nebula said, right? The branding person, right? Mm. So putting the branding person on was, was actually quite important in the beginning, right? Because it was, you know, a good name. You know, people knew the like the company that he's worked for and stuff like that. Right? So it was really important for for the business that 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 I run. Um, but as you grow, right, and you get a a bunch of customers on, and and you kind of start building your own brand in terms of the company, then that becomes less important, right? Always, always great to have, you know, like I mean, anybody would would be an idiot to say no to Jeff Bezos as a, a board member, maybe, right? Maybe, but, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, firing, fire right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That would actually be pretty cool to fire Jeff Bezos, right? Um, I would actually enjoy that. I think that would actually be pretty, pretty I nice. I know you would. That's, <laughs> that's kind of it. Um, so I think, you know, 
you will dip different life cycles, right? You need different stuff, right? I think yeah. that's that's the key thing to it, right? And making sure you find those gaps that you have in the team or in yourself that you can augment, right? I think that's that's mostly important. I think. True. So uh, for anyone who's about to enter into this a startup journey, how to set the task? Yeah. Any advice on that? Yeah. Apart so from I think using me, of course, and Precede Ventures. Did I mention that? Yeah, <laughs> obviously. <Yeah. with> okay. <laughs> nice. That was easy. Uh, so I think. It it's important to actually, I think a lot of people underestimate the importance of this because it's actually quite important, right? And it has quite a big impact on, on the trajectory of your company if you do it right. Um, so I think um, getting, you know, getting this set up, right? And, and, and I, you know, coming back to your like losing control thing, I think that's, you know, you need to be able to accept that, right? I mean, that's, that's just how it is, right? And if you need to take external capital in, you will lose control, right, at some point. That's just how it is. And you need to just be, be aware of that, right? Uh, but I mean, that's. I think if you make it as a conscious decision, I mean, then everyone is in the same boat to kind of make it successful, right? I think that's the most important thing. I mean, it's not like me against the investors, right? I think I have a good relationship with all my investors, um, and intend to keep it that way. But <laughs> I mean, obviously, <laughs> depending on how the how the other business progresses, right? Um, but I think you should not, as at least, not try to see it as as you know the company versus versus people. It's like everyone trying to kind of pull together in the same direction. Um, and if you do that, it can be a really really powerful like x x to 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 increase your velocity uh, and and scale up the company right True. so we grew from four people in end of 2016 like three years ago right to now we're a little bit more than 40 people right um so i've been doing that you know at a, at a quite rapid pace right uh, and aggressively mm. aggressively scaling right so we hired five people this month alone right um and i adding uh, quite a lot of people to the to the team mm. so i think that just in itself is, is majorly complex, right? Yeah, it is. So try to reduce complexity from yourself. I think that's maybe a, a good thing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, All right, thank you. And just as uh, Nikolai just said, you know, it's very important to, to find someone who has done the journey. So product-wise, product wise, wise, yeah, funding-wise, yeah. very important. Yeah. It could be a name. It could be someone who has done it before and so on. We made a bit of a, a recipe. I think we should just uh, go through it really fast. So running a professional board, building the right board, super important. Know your strategic goals, right? Find out what competencies you're missing. So e exactly in the beginning is super important not to put someone in the, in the board that's already sort of covered in the team, very important. And find someone with, uh, with experience as well. A board of directors should be complementary to the founding group and to the must wins. And you should always start with the chairperson, chairman of the board. Uh, because then you don't have to do all the work of finding the rest of the board members. It will be like a co-task going on. That makes a lot of sense. And uh, as Nikolai just talked before, only performance-based remuneration. It can be warrants, equity, or cash. Normally in our business, we see a lot of uh, warrants, equity. Not a lot of cash because there's not a lot of cash going around. So those are the first five. Hang on. Okay. So running a professional board. That's equally as important, of course. Now you have them. Alignment with the board, put the, uh, with the COB, put the board to work. They're there for a reason. We don't want these cigar smoking, coffee drinking, you know, uh, foxes sitting around. We want people who are able to execute. They shouldn't be afraid to spend a day or two a month, you know, in the operations to learn and, and get stuff done. High frequency and board meetings, keep that transparency. It's also a good exercise for when you get really big money. In the end is that, you create this operational freedom when you keep the transparency towards the board and the investors. It's a good exercise, right? I think maybe to add to that, right, it's, you know, not four meetings a year, right? It's no. eight to 12 meetings a year, right? Mm. That's what you need to do, right? Because yeah. then you can kind of get input at all times, right? That's super important, right? And just as the management team, you know, it's about getting to know each other, finding out how to use each utilize each other as best way. That takes practice. That's just the way it is. Make sure they're incentivized correctly, as I just said before. Grow the board in incrementally. Start with a chairperson. Find out what the next track, you remember the maturity journey. If you're going into something commercial, onboard a commercial person in good time so as to uh, teach the team how to do the next couple of moves. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, and all other than the chairman is considered a tool. I know it doesn't sound uh, right for the rest of you who is not a chairperson, but we are very instrumental about this, and you are going to be switched out with investors eventually. That's it so far. Well, that's good, right? Because then something is right, right? Then you, I mean, and then you have the equity you wasted, right? And then hopefully yeah, you've, fine. you've bid on the right horse, right? And then you... And then you come back to me, and I find another company yeah. you did well. That's yeah. just where it is. 
think we have. All right. And my mic be on. Oh, it's on, it's on. Yeah, we have around four minutes left. So yes. maybe we should spend that time for a few questions. I think we had the first one. That was about how much equity? Yeah, the range. The range? Yeah. Uh, so the bad answer here is it depends. I can just give you some examples. Uh, if we can maybe just two yeah, examples. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have this week um, hired a chairperson for a startup. Startup is IT company. He got some little bit of funding. It's still really early days. That person is, we don't have any cash. That person can get up to 3% of the equity vested over the next 36 months. That's one example. It's actually a bit high, but it's also an early stage startup. So I think when, yeah. I th I, we see a limit uh, depending on the person and the company. So something between one and three in three to five years vested. So it, it really depends. It depends on the case and you know how early they get in and if they yeah. want to put money on the table as well, which is also a good idea. Yeah. Always, yeah. you know. So and always vested, you know, on KPIs with a cliff. So so actually, yeah. in this case, which the reason why we said three person is actually it's a person that we sort of also would like as a per time uh, part time employee. So part of the agreement is that actually that person is providing a bit hands on help to the CEO because the CEO is relatively inexperienced. So that's why we think it could, it could add up, you know, because normally I would say it's one to two percent, but that's why. So it's really case by case, and of course, if you go into a well-funded company that has raised a lot of money, is valued a lot, of course, you're not getting the two percent. Then no. you're getting much yeah. less. I like to kind of think of it also in a way where I try to avoid like percentages because it just gets very weird, right? Yeah. Because you know. As Nicolas says, if you raised $100 million and 3% is not the same as if you raised five, five kroner, right? Um, so I, I think if you try to convert equity into cash, right, to whatever valuation you have at that point, right, I think you should be expect to pay a chairman that's of any value at least 100,000 kroner a year, right? At least, right? So probably more than that, probably like up to five, eight times that, right? Uh, in equity, right? I think that's, that's one way, that's how I see it at least, right? Obviously, try to pressure them, right? But you also pressure, not pressure them that so much that they get disengaged, right? I mean, it's like, uh, it's like with, 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 you know, with any type of kind of compensation, right? You need to find a level where everyone is, is, is happy, right? Um, I think, yeah, that, that's, I think that's the way I see it, at least. Cool. Any other questions? So you've mentioned a lot about finding the right chairperson. Can you shed a few secrets for identifying that person? Finding the right one? Yeah. Uh, I think we, uh, so we actually tried a few. Yeah, we tried a so, few, so right? Yeah, uh, we've tried a few. But there's sort of a, we, we try to, uh, so at least when I look for, uh, for these chairpersons for company, we're always looking for someone who has, have done the journey in some sense, uh, usually commercialized. Uh, that means uh, P&L responsibility, stuff like that. Strategic mind thinking uh, has time. Very important. You know, mm -hmm. we can't have someone flying in from New York once a year. So it's very important that they're here and they're able and they want to go to work. Uh, then chemistry. If I don't like them, then it's probably wouldn't like them either. Uh, then, you know, of course, in the domain would make sense if they have a network, stuff like that. Nikolai said, uh, said before. So trying to sort of narrow it down that way. Yeah, so it really depends also. For instance, I'm now also a board member in a biotech company, right? And, and so in that case, I need some very specific because it's actually, oh my God, we need some kind of credibility. How do we get cred credibility that we do with that person? Because of that person's skills, but also because of the network. And then you can sit in another company that is early stage IT company where you need other skills. So I think you should do exactly as Matt said, or said, what are the gaps we're having here? And the gaps is often compared to in the management team, right? Because even a fantastic founder have gaps because most likely that person hasn't done that two or three times before. So if that person has been before, have grown an IT company to that level, and that's where we are now, maybe you should find a person that has done the journey as Matt said. Uh, but it's really a lot about chemistry because it has yeah. to be this trust between the CEO, whatever. So what normally what you do as investors and as board members, uh, you know, is to basically get a lot of people in front, which you sort of can vouch for, get in front of the CEO. But they need to bond at some point in time mm. because you even that even if an investor have the right to appoint the the the, the chairperson, they really hate to do it. Because that will just mean that it's a person that the CEO doesn't like. Yeah. So, so it's and then, then it's never going to work, right? Yeah. So I just talked to an investor last week in, in Silicon Valley, actually, and 
he just came from a meeting. He was like 15 minutes late, really sorry because he was late. Uh, but it was actually because he had just been at a crisis meeting with a company, right? And the company was burning $2 million a month, right? Um, and they had two months of runway left, right? It's a little bit late realizing that when you're burning $2 million, right? Because <laughs> you can't really get rid of people that fast, right? So that's a problem, right? Yeah. And that was actually because, you know, he didn't, he didn't actually have the guts to call his chairman to say, hey, dude, we're running out of cash in like six months or eight months, right? Mm. We need to start kind of working on this, right? And what happened was that this was like a 150 people company. They fired 90% of the, the company, right? On the spot right there, right? So that's why it was 15 minutes late because they had to fire 90 people, right? So it's like, that's just an example of where it doesn't work, right? Mm. Yeah. So I think very important that you can call them at any time, right? Okay, and will you guys be around for yep. the after party and some beers? Because I heard there's some beers in the tents over there. Oh. If there's beer, we should yeah. go there fast. Yeah, we'll yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so as well. Um, and you are open for questions from yes. the audience there instead. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you.